Right now in your news at noon, the woman shot in front of her three children yesterday morning, now identified. We've got the latest details on the investigation. Plus, we now have hit 100 days since the Texas winter storms. We're hearing what the president and the CEO of CPS Energy has got to say about the issues that we're dealing with and a potential rate hike coming. Hoping to dry out a little bit. We do have some drier weather on the way. We'll take a look at the seven day forecast coming up. Live from Case at 12, the news at noon starts right now. And first at noon today, we now have the identity of the woman killed on the northeast side yesterday. 28 year old Samantha Lopez was the woman who was shot at the Belden Apartments in the 7500 block of Harlow Drive. Lopez shot while she was getting her kids into the car to take them to school. Her children have now been put in the custody of a grandmother. No arrests have been made. If you have any information, though, about this investigation, they're still looking for the shooter. Call SAPD's homicide unit at 210-207-7635. And we also have the identity of a man killed on the east side, Delon Lamont Weaver, age 24, shot yesterday just before noon at the Antioch apartment complex. That's in the 1500 block of Upland Drive. Police have arrested 26-year-old Keith Corley for the murder. Corley was arrested by Madison County deputies and is awaiting extradition back to Bear County. Two people hospitalized, one with serious injuries following a head-on crash in southeast Bear County. According to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, it happened just before 8 o'clock in the morning on a bridge right where it crosses the San Antonio River just east of Priest Road. Deputies say the driver of a work van or small truck was heading south on Loop 1604. It crashed head-on with a compact car, causing it to roll over. BCSO says both drivers had to be freed from their vehicles. They were taken to University Hospital. The driver of the van or small truck appears to have only suffered a broken ankle, but the man in the compact car has more serious, possibly life-threatening injuries. The investigation into that crash is still underway. Firefighters on the city's west side busy this morning after investigators say a sonic drive-in actually caught fire. It started a little after 9 a.m. at the location on Ingram near Callahan Road. Officials on the scene say an employee was driving by, saw the smoke, called 911. And when crews arrived, they had to bust down the kitchen door since it was closed. And that's when they saw flames on top of the cooler. It was quickly put out. There were no injuries. However, there was a lot of damage and it'll take at least a week to repair, if not longer. Damages are estimated at about $50,000. The latest now on a woman who was hit by a train overnight. She will likely recover. That happened around 11 o'clock last night, just northeast of downtown near the intersection of North San Marcos and Arbor Place. That's where the San Antonio Police Department says that the 40-year-old woman was walking beside a train that was moving. Somehow, she ended up walking into its path. She was taken to the hospital with a couple of broken bones. Several organizations coming together to help find missing children across the state. Today, a new month-long effort across the city has been launched through billboards that aim to find leads in local missing children cases. Sarah Costa spoke with one family who hopes this may lead to finding their 14-year-old daughter. On this billboard behind me is 14-year-old Alani McCaslin. She has brown hair and brown eyes. She was last seen on May 16th of this year, and she's just one of the many missing children across the state. Texas Department of Public Safety Missing Persons Clearinghouse received 49,110 missing person reports in 2020, with 37,000 being juveniles. It's why the Texas Center for the Missing, the National Center for the Missing Children, the San Antonio Police Department and Clear Channel Outdoor Americas have come together to launch a month long public service campaign to help find some of these local missing children in four major cities, Houston, Dallas, right here in San Antonio and in El Paso. Alani is one of those missing children. She was seen on May 16th in the 9000 block of Cordes Junction. She has also frequently been in the Perrin Vital area. She weighs 110 pounds and was last seen wearing a gray sweatshirt and jeans. And her family worries about her because she has a medical condition. She needs to be in certain medications, you know, that she cannot have, that she's not having right now. So it concerns me that, that it could be affecting her. Alani will be featured on 10 billboards across the city of San Antonio for the next month, including this one that can be seen while driving northbound on 281. If you know any information about Alani's whereabouts, you're urged to call 210-207-7660.
Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Today marks 100 days since we watched San Antonio begin its battle with the February winter storms. And while the city was blanketed with pretty snow, thousands of people lost power during the storms. President and CEO of CPS Energy, Paula Gold Williams, spoke with KSAT about the issues they are dealing with that includes rate hikes, lawsuits, and how people now perceive the company she's in charge of after customers were without power for a long time. In our Bear County Facts poll in April of 2020, their approval rating was at 77%. By March of 2021, it had slipped to 46%, due in large part to power outages. In a sit-down interview, Gold Williams told us the company has been trying to take the brunt of the financial burden in efforts not to raise prices. This team works all the time trying to make sure that we keep the bills affordable. Again, we haven't had a rate increase in seven years and we've only had one in 11 because we know that affordability, whenever we survey customers, it's typically at the very top of the things that they're concerned about. Williams also said that she takes full blame for the outages in February. She says, quote, all the things that CPS Energy did, I take full responsibility for. I run the company. We try our best, end quote. We've got the full interview on our website. All you need to do is go to ksat.com. The first day of early voting in the city's runoff election now complete. And we've got the numbers. We now know that 2,731 voters cast a ballot yesterday, and that number is only expected to rise. Early voting continues through the week, then ends on Tuesday, June 1st. Election day for the runoff election is Saturday, June 5th. Voters will decide races for city council districts 1, 2, 3, 5, and 9. All you got to do is head over to kset.com and find a list of polling locations and hours. And coming up tonight at 6, our team is speaking with the candidates running for District 5, Terry Castillo and Rudy Lopez. Castillo finished the first election with about 30% of the vote. Lopez had about 14%. We're going to hear their plan for the district, so be sure and tune in. May is Mental Health Awareness Month, and there are programs and resources available at the San Antonio Public Library for free to help you. Max Massey explains the plans and the importance. It is calm and quiet here now at the Central Library, but there are a lot of programs available for Mental Health Awareness Month. We're joined here with Crescencia from the library. So what should people know about the programs? We have so many different programs that we're offering for all ages. Um, everything from chair yoga to tai chi to um, our regular weekly programs like baby time and toddler time that help build the support structures that we need for mental health, like social connection. Now, why is this such a heavy emphasis? Well, mental health is something I think we've all become much more aware of over this past year with everything that we've gone through. And so, you know, we're learning more about how important it is to take care of our mental health as well as our physical health and the things that might be more obvious to the people around us. And the special reading list in partnership with Spurs Give? Oh, yes. So Spurs Give is one of our opportunities to really focus on some of those monthly observances. And this month, we, of course, have a list about mental health and we chose some books that really emphasize some of the aspects of mental health, like having a sense of belonging or positive uh, self-esteem that can be part of everyday life, but that we really want to build up in children. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. And if you guys have any questions about all these resources, the reading list, we're going to have all that. Just head to KSAT.com. Reporting at the Central Library, Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. This is a topic that we've been trying to spotlight here at KSAT 12 throughout the pandemic, mental health. Tomorrow, Mara, Myra Arthur is going to be hosting a KSAT Community Virtual Town Hall. She's going to be joined by four expert panelists who are going to dive into things like dealing with depression, anxiety, and substance abuse. It's happening tomorrow at 7 p.m. You can watch on KSAT.com and on the KSAT TV streaming app. It's available on Apple TV, Amazon, Fire Stick, and Roku. Still ahead on your news at noon, an underwater aquarium is now opening up in San Antonio, where you can come face to fin with the creatures and how much it'll cost you. And the Spurs are not in the playoffs, but they still have a lot of work to do. We'll tell you about that coming up. And making sure job seekers in San Antonio are dressed to impress. Coming up after the break, Stephen Cavasso shares how two local nonprofits are making it possible.
They are two nonprofits, but they share the same mission to uplift and to empower. Now, Dress for Success San Antonio and Through Project are coming together in hopes of getting people back to work and dressed to the nines. Stephen Gavasso spoke to both organizations and shares why they're asking for the community's help right now. Dresses and pantsuits, jackets, blazers, shoes. If you got it, they want it. Dress for Success San Antonio and Through Project are teaming up for a clothing drive campaign. It's part of an effort to help job seekers get the right business attire so they can land the right job. Donation boxes like this are currently set up at Alamo Title locations around the city. We're just taking in donations and then every once in a while one of us will swoop by and pick it all up. This is the first time both nonprofits are working together. Through Project was established just 10 years ago. They help foster youth overcome challenges faced in the foster care system. Just because you're in the foster care system um, and you age out doesn't mean that you should have to navigate this world alone. And Franklin says part of their job includes guidance, support and connecting youth to organizations like Dress for Success. We cannot let them uh, flounder. We can't not support them. Shokarin agrees and encourages people not to give up. You're going to find through your community and reaching out and maintaining support and clocking in with your resources that we are all in this together. The clothing drive will run through June 21st and on July 8th, both organizations will host a joint event called Light the Way Through to Success. It's a fashion show that will benefit both organizations. To learn more, you can head over to our website at KSAT.com. Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Outside with live cam clouds and rain again. A lot of rain downtown this morning, Justin. Uh, another uh, area of soaking showers came through a little bit earlier, but here's what I can tell you. Things are starting to dry out a little bit. We're starting to see more sun. That trend's going to continue going forward because, yes, we have been uh, pretty soggy as of late. The aquifer benefiting up half a foot to 667.5. And your pollen count, mold's still high, but it's down from where it was yesterday, almost cut in half, 7,160. A little bit of a drier forecast headed uh, heading forward. We'll take a look at that forecast for you coming up. Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. I think this is where it gets tough on our weather people because we're clamoring for rain. Please bring rain. Please bring rain. And now we're like, uncle already. That's enough. Stop. Yeah. Well, we're going to get to weather in just a minute. But if you're looking for oh. something to do with the kiddos today, we have got just the thing for you. Maybe it won't be raining. Today, Sea Life San Antonio is finally opening to the public. It's located at the shops at River Center. You can come face to Finn with Sea Life in 10 interactive zones at the aquarium, including the city's first underwater ocean tunnel, a stingray bay, and a seahorse mangrove exhibit. Annual passes and single day tickets are now on sale. Annual membership start at $45.99 for a family of three or more, and single day tickets start at $23.99. Annual pass holders get unlimited admission for a year. Masks and face coverings not required if you are fully vaccinated. However, they are highly encouraged. You can read more about Sea Life SA on our website, kz.com. And it's I, not raining indoors. So that's yeah, it's a, in, that's an indoor activity. We want to get back outside. Well, you know, it's nice that the sun is out. But here's the other side to all this is that now it feels like a sauna outside. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we have to deal with that. Heat index values will jump up into the 90s today, that's for sure. Let's look at the month of May, how we've been doing rainfall wise. 4.53 inches, that is above average. And in April, we saw six inches. So we've had a really good stretch here. The days highlighted in green are the days in which we saw measurable rainfall. We've had several of them in a row now. And uh, we've seen a little bit of rain today, tenth of an inch. So. Yeah, it, it's been a busy May, that's for sure. And it looks like it'll quiet down for a little while before perhaps picking back up a little bit next week. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Radar shows that most of the rain has moved out of San Antonio. Now we're just dealing with some cloud cover. Uh, the showers are picking up, though, east of us. Luling, Gonzales over towards Howitzville. We'll zoom in a little bit closer in places around uh, Harwood, just east of Harwood there along I-10. Uh, dealing with some uh, downpours. Shiner, you're about to get a good downpour moving in your direction in Howitzville. A little bit of a shower looks just to your, uh, just moving just to your east. Quero, some rain falling at this hour. 
Gully had some thunderstorms just to your west. Those will probably work in your direction here next couple of hours. But as far as San Antonio is concerned, again, the things are quiet now. The sun is out and uh, it's feeling pretty toasty out there. Because all that rain is moving east, there still are flash flood watches in effect. Uh, Gonzales and points east. The flood threat's still there only because they've seen so much rain last couple of weeks. Uh, so any additional rainfall will cause some issues, but uh, not uh, any real big issues at the moment. Time lapse shows that we had clouds this morning, some rain. You can see that coming through very quickly, and then sun came out. Now we're dealing with uh, quite a bit of blue sky. 82 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 73. That is extremely high. And you can see the cloud cover has uh, sort of gone away for the moment, although it looks like it's trying to build back in from the west. We may see clouds briefly increase, but it'll still be a mix of sun and clouds today. 79 at uh, Randolph, 86. Stinson, we're up to 88. Pleasanton, 82 in Hondo. Underneath the clouds, a little cooler in Uvalde, 79 there, but up to 84 in Del Rio. Dew points in the 70s, so it's extremely sticky. That doesn't really change, but we are looking at a heat index value. Feels like 87 here in town. Feels like 95 in Pleasanton, and uh, this sort of trend will continue next couple of days. Water vapor shows we've got some drier air trying to invade from the west, and I think that really is what's helping kind of shut down the rain west of San Antonio today. There's also an outflow boundary right there. We'll have to watch that. Doesn't look like it's doing much, though, uh, there in the Hill Country. And there will be some more severe storms, it looks like, out across west Texas today. Uh, Del Rio and Valverde County included in a marginal risk. We'll have to watch for some storms tonight that come out of the west. This forecast shows just a couple of isolated showers and storms east of I-35 around 4 o'clock. And then tonight it does show a few storms trying to work into the Rock Springs Del Rio area before falling apart. And then we'll just get some cloud cover here in town. So the forecast, 20% chance rain today, 20% chance tomorrow. We're near 90 Thursday and Friday. 20% chance of storms on Saturday. We'll have to watch what goes on across North Texas uh, because some of that rain could work its way south on Saturday. Uh, but 86 Sunday, 87 as it stands for Memorial Day. And I mentioned it may get a little more active next week. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, but seeing things quite down, at least for the moment, guys. Thank you, Justin. Take a break. Yeah. Why don't you? Will do. Yeah. The Texans will be out there starting quarterback for the next few workouts. And Julio Jones says he has no desire to be traded to the Cowboys. A big congratulations going out to former Wagner high grad Jordan Clarkson. He has taken home the NBA's sixth man award for this season. The first member of the Utah Jazz to win that award. Clarkson averaged a career-high 18.4 points per game. That included another career-high 208 made three-pointers. While he did start one game, his average as a reserve at 18.3 per game was the highest in the NBA. He graduated from Wagner back in 2010. He's how the voting looked for you. It was pretty, pretty one-sided. No problem. All right, while the playoffs are in full swing without the Spurs, there is still work to be done, especially when it comes to free agents. There are several... But the one most likely to stick around for next season is going to be Patty Mills, the last holdover from the 2014 championship and a player that has invested in his community. That's according to our latest instant replay poll. DeMar DeRozan and Rudy Gay are the other two big game free agents with DeRozan more than likely demanding a max deal as an unrestricted free agent. The Spurs are in the NBA draft lottery, even though the chances of landing the top spot are less than 2%. But they still have many other young players to build on for next season, including Lonnie Walker the fourth, Kelvin Johnson, Devin Gassell, and Drew Eubanks. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Houston Texans are having voluntary workouts, but they will be without their starting quarterback, Deshaun Watson. Says he is skipping the, the all-voluntary team activities and still wants to be traded, even though he's facing as many as 22 civil lawsuits for sexual assault and misconduct. That's according to the NFL Network. It still remains to be seen when Watson will return to the field as the NFL continues its own investigation that could lead to a suspension. It is for that reason teams are reluctant to speak with the Texans about a trade, not knowing if he will be there to start the season. And Julio Jones is not going to be traded to the Dallas Cowboys. The Falcons wide receiver made that pretty clear. Speculation went rampant when a fan posted a picture of himself with Jones wearing a Dallas Cowboys sweatshirt after Jones demanded a trade during the offseason. He doubled down on that demand when he told Fox Sports 1's Shannon Sharp that he's out of here. And when pressed on whether or not he would want to play for the Dallas Cowboys, his answer was, 
I'm out of there. NFL.com reported that Jones had asked for a trade a few months ago and that the Falcons were listening to offers to try and accommodate him. But the 32-year-old has a contract that guarantees him over $15 million next season. And they're going to have to find a team at this point that has the cap space available since the contract runs through 2023. There are 11 teams with that kind of cap space available, including Jacksonville and New England. In the meantime, Dallas Cowboys rookie quarterback Nation Wright is clearing the air about his draft night comments when he was picked in the third round by the Cowboys at the time. He called himself a more athletic and agile Richard Sherman, which prompted a quick reaction from Richard Sherman on social media. During the Cowboys rookie minicamp, Wright says he's decided to send Sherman a direct message on Instagram and clear the air and explain himself. So glad we got all that cleared up before this Social guy's media gets sure. people in so much yeah, trouble. Big time. All right, a rare black fungus raising an alarm in India coming up in our next half hour. How it ties to coronavirus patients and who else medical experts say could be at risk of getting it. Plus, President Biden will host the family of George Floyd at the White House today to mark the first anniversary of his death. After the break, how he is being honored and the latest on his promised changes in policy, policing. Today marks one year since the death of George Floyd. The 46-year-old African-American man murdered at the hands of Minneapolis police sparked a racial justice movement and demands for police reforms. Now this afternoon, the Floyd family is set to meet up with President Biden at the White House, who has promised changes in policing in the wake of Floyd's death. However, negotiations continue on Capitol Hill. ABC's Alex Prache is in Minneapolis with more. One year later, it's a day of remembrance. This block at 38th in Chicago is hallowed ground in Minneapolis. The city coming together with multiple events today to mark the murder of George Floyd and demands for racial justice and reforms in policing. Don't just open your eyes, stretch, yawn, and think that it's over. Floyd's family, including his daughter Gianna, are spending the day in Washington. This afternoon, they'll meet privately with President Biden. A White House spokesperson saying the meeting is closed doored in order to have a real conversation. Let's get it done next month by the first anniversary of George Floyd's death. President Biden had set this day as a deadline for Congress to have a police reform bill on his desk, even telling the Floyd family directly after the Derek Chauvin trial that he'd get it passed. Congress says that's not going to happen, at least not today. But bipartisan talks in the Senate appear to be showing signs of progress, according to the two lead negotiators. The issue of qualified immunity for police officers has been the major sticking point. Democrats pushing to end it. Republicans don't support that. The president um, is still very much hopeful that he will be able to sign the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act into law. There have been changes at the state and local level. Data from the National Conference of State Legislatures found at least 82 bills enacted across 22 states aimed at police reforms and transparency since Floyd's death. The governor here has urged residents to take a moment of silence, nine minutes and 29 seconds, representing the time that Derek Chauvin was kneeling on George Floyd's neck. Meanwhile, Derek Chauvin is set for sentencing June 25th. Alex Perche, ABC News, Minneapolis. Las Vegas officials say a pilot has now died after an aircraft operated by a military contractor out of Nellis Air Force Base crashed in a nearby residential area. It's unclear right now whether there were injuries to the people on the ground. Witnesses posted images online of a plume of smoke not too far from a fence that goes to the base, while others reported hearing the crash and then seeing the black smoke. Nellis is best known for hosting periodic training exercises where U.S. and allied pilots conduct mock battles over a restricted military reserve. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken pledged to support the help of rebuilding Gaza. He did that yesterday. At least 232 Palestinians, including 65 children, were killed in the violence between Israel and Hamas earlier this month, along with at least a dozen Israeli, including two children. Blinken specified the U.S. will be helping the people of Gaza, but will not help Hamas, which the U.S. and many of its allies consider a terrorist organization. Another tropical cyclone expected to strike India just one week after a deadly storm slammed its western coast. The country's national and state disaster response teams are now 
preparing for the cyclone. This one is named Joss, and forecasters predict it to be intensifying into a very severe cyclonic storm. The state of West Bengal says that they aim to evacuate more than one million people. It's expected to make landfall tomorrow on India's northeastern coast. Parts of a 2019 memo on whether then-President Donald Trump obstructed the Russian investigation are in limbo. The Justice Department partially appealing a judge's order to release the memo to the public. The DOJ released parts of it on Monday, but it didn't shed any light on a former Attorney General William Barr's decision not to charge former President Trump. The DOJ appeal on releasing formerly redacted portions could be tied up in court for some time. Looking outside with live cam. I see blue sky. You know, it it really feels like the end of the rainy uh, period that we've had. For now. Yeah. For now. It, it, it feels like it. You can tell there's been a change. Uh, you're right. Yeah, and it, it is going to dry out in the next couple of days. Uh, this weekend, there's a couple of chances for rain, but it's not going to be, I think, the complete washout that we've been dealing with as of late. There is still rain on the radar, but it's uh, east of us. Let's look at the big picture here across the state of Texas and Dallas Fort Worth getting quite a bit of rain at this hour. Complex of showers and storms moving through uh, through the Metroplex and then you've got showers lining up from just east of San Antonio over towards Houston. But in general, the area of rain is starting to move east and sort of away from us. And that's why the skies are beginning to clear. We're seeing those blue skies and temperatures are on their way up. 82 degrees at the airport right now. 82 Gonzales, 83 New Braunfels. Still some 70s as you get into the hill country. 73 Rock Springs, but closing in on 90 in Cthulhu. It promises to be a warm, humid day. Let's look at some of those rain chances. Just a 20% shot next couple days. And I really think tomorrow it's just going to be east of I-35. Another slight chance on Saturday. We'll be keeping a close eye on Sunday and Monday. Right now, rain chances are low, but there could be a couple of isolated uh, showers and storms to the uh, Memorial Day weekend. We'll be watching that very closely for you. And as far as uh, today goes, temperatures topping out near 88 degrees. Uh, rain chances taper off this evening. Southeast Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. Guys. Justin. As India continues to grapple with coronavirus crises, some patients who are infected or recently recovered from COVID-19 are now catching a potentially deadly infection and it is known as black fungus and it can be found anywhere. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more on how a person gets that infection and the symptoms in today's Health Minute. It's called mucor mycosis, a rare but potentially deadly infection also known as black fungus. Remember, we are in summertime. It's hot, it's humid, and everybody knows that fungus infection festers in these kind of climes. The past few weeks, doctors in India began raising an alarm about thousands of black fungus cases. Many of those being infected there are coronavirus patients or those recently recovered whose immune systems have been weakened by the virus or underlying conditions, most notably diabetes. Black fungus has been around for a long time, is caused by mold in the soil, but can go into the air in the form of spores attacking the respiratory tract. Symptoms depend on where in the body the fungus is growing, but can include facial swelling, fever, skin ulcers, and black lesions in the mouth. So this is a pretty serious infection, which if not controlled, not treated, can have a mortality of anything from 20% to 50%. The disease can be found around the world, but is generally rare in most places. Though it can be hard to know the exact number of cases due to lack of comprehensive surveillance and data, but recovery depends on how early the disease is caught. Early diagnosis, quick intervention, surgical if required, and then a prolonged course of judicious, potent antifungal agents, and you will get the better of the fungus. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. That's a good one. Still ahead on your news at noon, and music icons items are going to be up for grabs. We'll show you some of the things you can bid on and win. Plus, Marvel's latest movie's making sure it has a diverse cast. You can see who is playing a lead in Eternals next. And also after the break, Walmart apologizing to dozens of customers after racist emails were sent out. How the retail giant says the mistake actually happened.
Never miss a story. Watch live or when you want. San Antonio's latest news and weather. Streaming free on KSAT TV. Walmart responding to an uproar over racist emails. The company says they were sent from its account by what it called a, quote, bad actor. Dozens of people on Twitter said they got emails with a racial slur from a Walmart account. It happened after someone created fake shopping accounts on Walmart's site using the recipient's email addresses. An auto-generated Welcome to Walmart email was sent to the accounts after they were signed up. The retail giant says it was appalled by the emails and is taking measures to ensure this doesn't happen again. Personal items from some of music's biggest legends being auctioned off in just a few weeks. Julian's Auctions announcing the lineup of icons who whose things are going to be on sale. And uh, this is an A-list roster. There's Alex Van Halen's black and white drum set, his brother Eddie's black guitar, Bob Dylan's handwritten song notes, Prince's blue guitar, and an original line drawing by the late rocker Kurt Cobain. The auction starts the weekend of June 12th. Hey, if you ever wanted your bedroom to look like a donut shop, you're in luck. Paint company Backdrop is releasing Dunkin' Donuts iconic pink and orange tones. Officials at Dunkin' say the collaboration makes perfect sense since home improvements are on the rise this year, but you're going to have to hurry if you want some. Only a limited number of the half-gallon cans of paint are going to be made available. They're 39 bucks each and available on Backdrop's website. Finally, there's an extra reason to look forward to getting off of work today and maybe a slight chance that you're going to oversleep tomorrow. That's because today is National Wine Day. I look forward to it every day. It's observed every year on May 25th, so cook up a nice meal and pour yourself a beautiful glass of Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, Zinfandel, or whatever happens to be your favorite. If you're not a big drinker, you can always try to cook with your wine. So you have National Wine Day. You wake up the next morning in a room that looks like a Dunkin' Donuts shop. Boy. Oh, that hurts. Jeez. <laughs> you know, these days, I feel like National Wine Day, if some sort of a wine day happens like every other week. Oh, she just said Same with Chocolate day. day, too. Yeah. It's Chocolate Day? <laughs> well, probably somewhere. These holidays are everywhere these days. Uh, anyway, 82 so far today, 72 the low this morning. We did pick up a tenth of an inch of rain after some morning showers. A lot of that rain starting to move out. Some drier weather on the way. Your seven day forecast is coming up. The long awaited trailer for Marvel's Eternals is here and it does not disappoint. Take a look. The film directed by Oscar winner Chloe Zhao is about a group of superheroes who have been quietly helping out mankind for centuries. The trailer shows the movie has a diverse cast, including Salma Hayek in a leading role. The film also stars Angelina Jolie, Gemma Chan and two Game of Thrones alums. Eternals will be in theaters November 5th. Timothy Chalamet is set to play Willy Wonka in an upcoming Warner Brothers film. It's an original story that will show the chocolate maker's younger years. Chalamet's representatives say he's going to sing and dance in the movie. Johnny Depp played Willy Wonka in Tim Burton's 2005 film, and Gene Wilder did so back in 1971. Dahl also wrote the original screenplay for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. All right, The Late Show with Stephen Colbert plans to open its doors to a full crowd starting June 14th. Colbert hasn't had an in-person show in more than a year. The host issued a statement joking that he looks forward to, quote, once again doing a show for an audience that I can smell and touch. The Ed Sullivan <laughs> Theater will follow CDC guidelines for those who are fully vaccinated. Facial coverings will be optional for those who attend. Uh Okay, the smell and touch thing, I'm, uh, okay. How about see, smell? Yeah. Um, Maybe not touch. Can you smell rain outside? This morning you could. Yeah, yeah, you could. <laughs> it was pretty damp this morning. We had some showers coming through. That's changed a little bit. You know, a lot of people have been asking about the lunar eclipse tonight. So we'll switch gears a little bit and talk about this. Here's the thing. Here's what I got to preface this with. It's likely going to be fairly cloudy, so this is going to be hard to see. There is a chance we can fit it in here, but uh, we're talking late tonight, early tomorrow morning, and that's when clouds will likely be at their thickest. The eclipse starts at 444. Total eclipse begins at 611. We'll get the maximum at 618, and then it ends at 625. A uh, moonset is at 642. So again, cloud cover will be there. You may be able to check it out. 
Uh, 73 overnight, cloudy skies, southeast Julie winds 5 to 15 miles per hour. I think it's going to be a really close call, but didn't want to let you know about it. And outside right now, 82 degrees, partly cloudy, southerly winds at about 8 miles per hour. And the uh, temperatures, 81 Bernie Stage, 81 Rio Medina, 82 Hondo, 86 Divine, 83 in New Braunfels. It's already a pretty warm day. And the uh, temperatures are closing in on 90 down there in Catua. Uh, 84 Del Rio and 83 right now in Victoria. Dew points, uh, we can throw that one out. I don't think it's the dew points 81 in Bevo. If it were, that would be just incredible humidity. It's up there, though. I, I would imagine it's in the mid-70s. Victoria's at 74, Gonzales at 77. Bottom line here is it's going to be one of those days where we start to calculate the heat index. Feels like it's 87 here in town. Feels like it's 94 in Pleasanton, and these numbers are only going to go up. As we get into the afternoon and as we see more sun, the clouds have been thickest out west, but no rain there. It's just cloud cover. And then uh, we've got the showers stretching from Gonzales down to Victoria. Now on the top of your screen, you'll notice there is a little bit of an outflow battery coming in. This may try to kick off a shower or storm, although it feels a little and looks a little more stable. San Antonio and points west. Again, most of the rain stretching from I-35 east along I-45. Nice little area of showers and storms working south and east. That'll affect eastern parts of Texas today. And our forecast shows that, yeah, most of the storms are going to stay uh, east of us, east of San Antonio. And then as we get into tonight, some storms that develop out in west Texas could try to work south and east into the area. The chances of this are pretty low. I say if you're in Valverde County, you have a chance to see some rain tonight, but that's about where it ends. That probably will die down and then we'll be left with just cloud cover overnight as we showed you. So the extended forecast, 20% chance today, 88 degrees, 88 tomorrow, 20% chance of rain. Then we go 89 on Thursday, partly cloudy. Thursday and Friday look to be dry days. Uh, and then by Saturday, another little system uh, tries to move in and uh, could bring a front with it, although there's still some questions as to whether or not that front moves through. But a 20% chance of rain on Saturday. Sunday at this point looks dry, but there are some hints that we could see an isolated storm or two Sunday into Monday. So I'd say stay tuned. At this point, we're going to leave rain chances out of the forecast. I know Memorial Day weekend is a big one, uh, but at the moment, it doesn't look too, too busy, guys. All right, Justin, thank you. Streaming companies were already competing with each other, and now new competitors are joining the battle for viewers. Coming up after the break, details on the new platforms and the works and what viewers need to know. The online streaming entertainment market getting a bit more crowded. Warner Media now merging with Discovery, and they're creating a new company. And now Amazon is reportedly in talks to buy a film studio to possibly pour more content into its existing prime video streaming service. CNN's Mary Maloney breaks it all down for you. The streaming wars already packed full of competing companies, and now new competitors are joining the battle for viewers. If you understand your consumer and you have the money to spend, you can produce a lot of co a lot more content for them to keep them much more engaged and much more happy. Last week, AT&T announcing a deal that spins off Warner Media, which is the parent company of CNN, and would combine it with Discovery in a new standalone company. Discovery CEO says the move has the potential to create a media powerhouse, one that's not just capable of competing with Netflix and Disney, but could alter the streaming wars as we know it content at, at Warner that people would pay for before they'd pay for dinner, like Superman and Batman and Game of Thrones. And you put that together with all the local content that we have in, in the market and the relationships that we have, I think it gives us a big advantage in going global. And now Amazon is possibly upping its prime video arsenal. The tech giant is reportedly in talks to buy film studio MGM. Media experts say MGM's films and TV projects could easily find a home on Amazon's prime video. I think the internet is a much more favorable medium for consumers who are saying, I like X, how do I find X? And while consumers gain content options, experts say the biggest win is that you can watch whatever you want, whenever you want. That's a better viewing experience both in terms of content because you know, I'm looking for something very specific and they're giving it to me in a linear format, um, but it's also less interrupted by ads. For Consumer Watch, I'm Mary Maloney. All right, SA I, Live. I think Mike just liked being by himself. He, he misses Fiona, 
But look yes. at all the food and wine. He, that, it, it, it's wine day. That's yeah. wine, well, it's, right? It's wine day and it's it's charcuterie, so the combination oh, of well. the two. But yes, of course, we are celebrating National Wine Day. And, yep, Brian Gonzalez from The Board Couple this is, is here. Day. Why not pop champagne to celebrate, Why not? right? Well, Mike, you should only enjoy sparkling wine and champagne on days that end with Y. Tuesday? Okay. Yeah, that's right. We qualify. And you're going to make what kind of a drink with that? We're going to make some aperitifs, and we're going to look at aperitifs all the way to digestives. And that's at the end of the meal. That's at the end of the meal. So just like every course, appetizer, main course, dessert, same thing with wines, From right? From appetizer to dessert, my friend. There's a wine for every occasion. All right, we're going to tell you all about that. You can take classes in that, too, how to arrange one of these great charcuterie boards and all of the wine tasting. Speaking of great food, Jen is down on the Riverwalk at Boudreaux's. Hey, Jen. That's right. Come play tourist, right? The Riverwalk, everything seems to be getting back to normal. A great scene out here. One of the staples is Boudreaux's Texas Bistro. Now, this cocktail is a must try. We'll tell you what it is, and we may make another one as well. And of course, we're going to get a sneak peek of the menu. All that coming up. All right, and we have the inspiring story of a former drill sergeant who is now a girls basketball coach, and he is literally making their hoop dreams come true. And at the end of the day, what do you like to uh, end your day with? What beverage? We're going to ask that coming up. That and a whole lot more on SA Live.